Hey guys, it's Tuesday, November 3rd, and uh, start to a brand new week. Hope you have great plans for this week, and uh, that God is going to be with you and uh, work through you, live through you, that you connect with Him in deeper and deeper ways this week. That's what I'm hoping to do, and uh, this is a new week for growing closer to Christ. Um, you know, uh, the weather here has been fantastic. Uh, I know it's going to change again, and when it does, I'm going to be thinking about one of my favorite places on earth, which is New Zealand. Uh, way, way back, way, way back before COVID existed. So January of this year, Jennifer and I got to go to New Zealand. And uh, man, that place is beautiful. I particularly like the North Island, especially the Coromandel Peninsula on the east side um, it, with all of its spectacular beaches. Oh, my goodness. It seemed like every time we turned around, uh, there was another breathtaking beach to look at and experience. You know, I first went to New Zealand when I was 18 years old. I went to uh, Cape and Ray Bible School while, while I was there. And uh, it was a fantastic experience. One time, uh, we were uh, on the Coromandel Peninsula, actually, and with, our, with our Cape and Ray group. There was maybe 30 of us or something. And uh, we, we stayed at a, these cottages. We stayed there overnight. And then uh, we just had a spiritual retreat up there. So it was really, really fantastic. Early in the morning, I went out for a walk. And uh, I love going for a walk. And so I I found this uh, little trail and I followed this trail and led to this beautiful, beautiful beach. And uh, I mean, there was no one there. It looked so incredible. And so I went back and I wanted to tell people about it. Well, the director of our school, the principal of our school said we were going to try and have a communion service that day. And he was going to look for a location. And I was like, I got your location, man. Uh, This place is gorgeous. So he goes, okay. So we packed all the, we got our guitars, we had communion elements, and our whole team were, were all walking, they're following me, and I'm leading them to this, this incredible, beautiful, private location. And we go down the trail, and this was like three or four hours later, so now it's like 11 or so in the morning, and we burst out on this beach, and it's a nudie beach, <laughs> okay? There's a reason why it was so private. So there was this incredibly awkward moment as all of us, you know, uh, Bible school students, <laughs> fully clothed, uh, burst out onto this beach and uh, look at all the, <laughs> these naked people. And they are all looking at us. And, and, and then everybody's looking at me because I sort of brought them there. Anyway, super, super awkward situation. It would have been nice if there was a sign. You know, a sign saying, hey, this way to Nudie Beach, we probably would not have gone down that way. Uh, We could have avoided an awkward situation. And I mean, who knows if it was something else? It could have been a dangerous situation. A sign would have been great. Now, life is like that sometimes. We can avoid many awkward situations, sometimes even painful situations, if we just know and obey the signs for safety. And God has a way for us to live, a way that's safe and full of life, and he wants us to follow it. Here's what it says in 1 John chapter 5. It says, Everyone that believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And whoever loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So what are we seeing here? We see a few things. We see that love for God is obeying his commands. That's what it means to love God, is to obey his commands. And in order to obey his commands, okay, so if we agree that that loving God is obeying his commands, that's what scripture seems to say, or not seems to say, that's what it says. If loving God is obeying his commands, then we should know what his commands are, right? In order to to obey, we must know what God's commands are. If we don't know what his commands are, we can't obey them. And we learn about God's commands uh, several ways. One of the primary ways, I think the primary way we know about God's commands is by reading the Bible. And uh, God wants us to live the best lives we can live. And so he's put up signs in his word. Signs that say, don't go there. Signs that say, walk in this way. Signs that say, follow me, Jesus says. And we must obey his signs, his commands, uh, if we want to live the fullest and the best life that we can. He loves us very much. He wants us to avoid all of the unnecessary pain and suffering that we can in this life. 
So he says, I've got a, a way of life for you to walk if you walk in these ways. Wouldn't it be better um, to walk in those safe ways uh, and obey his commands? Now, some people say, well, if, if I know his commands, now I got to obey them. Wouldn't it be better if I didn't... Uh, if I didn't know his commands, then I wouldn't be guilty of disobeying him. I mean, the more I know, the more responsibility, right? Uh, well, that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is why wouldn't we want to accept God's very best for our lives? If he has a way that leads to life, why wouldn't we want to know everything we can about that way and then walk as close as we can with his power and his grace in that life-giving way? You know, that's why I want us to be readers of the word. I want you to be a reader of the word. I mean, it's good to come to Sunday. It's good to be here, our sermons online. And, um, uh, you know, we, are, we work hard at making sure they're biblically sound, that they're spirit-filled, and, uh, and God is, is teaching us. So that is good. It is good to listen to those things. However, that's once a week. And uh, usually we, we're focusing on one main idea when we preach. And life is coming at us faster than that. We need more input. We need more guidance, more counsel. And that's why I want you to be a reader of the word. I want you to be into it. I want you to take it in your hands. I want you to open it. I want you to read it um, every day, systematically. Get, read, read and read and read. And you can read through the whole Bible in a year. You can read through the book of, uh, of Proverbs, uh, you know, one chapter a day for a month. There's 31 Proverbs in the, in the book of Proverbs. You could read the Gospels, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and hear about Jesus and learn more about Jesus. Read the letters, Colossians, or Corinthians, 1st and Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and the rest of those that are in the New Testament. God has much that he wants us to learn, ways that we can live that are healthy and full of life. And I don't want you to miss out. My dad had a grade six education, but he loved God's word. And because of that and his obedience to it, God blessed him with great wisdom. And that's how I want us to be too. So we can walk in the way that is safe and not, uh, not end up in some ridiculously awkward position or painful situation. All right, you guys, uh, I love you. I'm proud of you. This is an exciting week. Um, uh, some of you are going to be at the revelation uh, thing tonight. So I'm really excited about uh, quoting that tonight. And uh, we're going to record it so that it'll be available online. We'll get it on our website. So if you can't make it tonight, you still watch it if you'd like and uh, experience that book. All right, hope you guys have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you again on Friday. 